Hey guys, Gaius and Gabe here at the Shelter Institute. We've been building these small SIP buildings and winter is coming. So this one is in the way of plowing. So we need to get it out of here. We're going to use that truck and some chains and this strap to get it exactly in position over there. We're going to show you how we use the come along to very carefully and easily position it. After we've finished moving the building into position, we can talk more about the structures themselves and some of the projects that we do with them. That was electric. I mean, that was insane. Up high, not too high. Damn it. So we have these large holes drilled in the runners under these buildings, and we're just going to run loops of chain through that that we can then hook a longer chain to. So you want to hop in the truck and back it up here? Think she'll pull it? What? Think she'll pull it? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, no. we got to give it a try because we got the cameras on us now, so... Might as well back it up here. Good thing you got new rubber on it. Well, uh, basically gonna have to pull it a little bit past and then we're gonna have to hook the chains up to the back of the building and pull it back to that hemlock tree with the come alongs. So, did you do this by yourself? One person? Yeah, you could definitely do it by yourself. But, I need to call Ethan and have him move his truck. Look out your window. Hey, uh, can you move your truck or can I move your truck or something? We're gonna put this building in there. Okay, thanks. Bye. He gave us the go ahead to move his truck. Oh crap. Check engine lights Stuff's on. blinking. I think the car, the swervy car is off. Anthony blinking. Yeah. I mean, this might work. You got low tire pressure. This whole operation. Look, I think all four working. are low. It says four times four. Eight That's fine. Four. Just put electrical tape over that one. We're going to use a strap on the tree so that we don't damage the bark. And I've got that strap elevated slightly so we're not just pulling straight back we're pulling up a little bit that'll help lift the runners up a little bit so we don't dig into the dirt and then just need to release this come along <clears throat> stretch out the cable I think we want to pull let's pull that back a little bit further still and <clears throat> that will bring us you know this way a bit so we're just trying to get this thing straightened up so that we can get it pulled back basically where we want it. So we'll toggle back and forth from left side to right side. And then when we're happy with the angle, we'll hook both sides on and just draw it straight back. This is the loosening motion. Gabe was struggling a little bit, pulling it with single line pull, so we're switching to double line pull. See, now it looks like you made it easier for you. Well, I'm holding this for you. Oh. I'm going to do a little talking. You can do some cranking. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we could tell that we are fairly close to the single line pull capacity. And the only thing that happens if you exceed it is that the handle will fold. So to save the handle, we switch to a double line pull, which should make the pulling twice as easy or half as hard, depending on how you look at it. It's also a lot slower, about half the speed, essentially. So the slight downside to the double line pull is that it's half as fast. So obviously the building's moving very slowly, but it's easier on the come along, it's easier on Gabe, and we'll get there eventually. An alternative that we have here to the come along is that we can hook up uh, another block called the snatch block that would allow us to use the truck pulling in that direction. So the cable would come up to the strap that's attached to the tree and return to the truck. So as we're pulling that way, the building would be moving back that way. But um, that's a much faster movement. We don't have a lot of control over where it's going to go. Whereas when we're using the come along, we can alternate between pulling on the left side or the right side to get it exactly aligned and then 
pull back to just where we want it. So yes, it's moving slowly, but it also gives us the option of moving left to right and getting it very nicely fine-tuned. So the advantage to come along over the pickup truck, obviously, is that it's a one-person operation. Gabe can see exactly what's happening. We're not running that piece of equipment. It's peaceful, and we're getting paid by the hour, so it's working out well for us, essentially. So we've just finished moving the building into place using the come along. It is a slow and powerful item. Just like me. Very slow, but powerful. We estimate that this building weighs about 2,500 pounds. So the come along is easily able to drag that along and get it into place. Got a little bit of work left to do getting the thing level and we'll be all done. So this is the interior of the 10 by 12 SIP building that we build in our one day SIP class. And as you can see, it's completely unfinished. The interior of the structural insulated panel is OSB. So just behind this OSB is the foam that insulates the panel. And on the outside is another layer of OSB. Those are all glued together into a little foam sandwich. So when you build a SIP house, this is basically what it looks like on the inside when you're getting close to being done. Uh, building the shell. The next step is to install a SIP tape, which is a vapor barrier tape that goes over all of the seams so that moisture can't migrate into those. And then your interior finish can be applied, whatever that is, whether it's gypsum or tongue and groove boards or just painting the interior if it's just a storage shed. The nice thing about this building, even though it's quite small, is that it's nicely insulated. So the floor, walls, and roof are all insulated. The SIP floor is actually the structure of the floor um, spanning between the runners that the building is dragged on. So that's the end of our come along demonstration. This is a 10 by 12 SIP building. We teach how to build with SIPs, but we also sell these little buildings. If you're interested in purchasing a kit that you assemble yourself or having us build it and complete it and deliver it, uh, you can give us a call or check out the link below to our website. If you'd like to learn more about our SIP kits, check out the link below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, here at the Shelter Institute, we've been teaching people to design and build their homes since 1974 and we've been building timber frames for about 40 years. We design and build timber frames, we sell fine woodworking tools, we teach house building classes of many different types. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, Check us out in person here at our store in Woolwich, Maine or online at shelterinstitute.com.